Rev up your engines. Lemmixons ask, where did you learn most of everything you know about cars? Well, from all over the place. I started when I was 14 at the corner Texaco gas station. My grandfather was a master mechanic, and I started working on the weekends when I was 14. And uh, he wouldn't teach me anything. He hated teaching people things. He had no patience. But he let me watch. <laughs> and you can learn a lot looking at stuff with your eyes, you know? And then it just goes on. I fixed them, learned. In those days, cars weren't that complex, so you could pick up stuff real fast. As time went on, I got more complicated, but that's where you watch me on the internet. Hey, you can get so much information on the internet. And today, with YouTube, people watch my YouTube repair videos. I watch other people's YouTube repair videos. If I work on a car that I'm not that interested in researching, like I don't like Jaguars, they fall apart all the time. So somebody brings me one's got a weird problem. Hey, I'll watch YouTube. Somebody else who works on them all the time, and they'll say, Hey, look behind the radiator. There's a piece of wire that falls off on these, and then uh, you learn how to fix them that way. And for pure information, oh, the internet has everything now. You can get raw data. You can get freeze frame graph analysis. You can get all kinds of stuff on the internet, so it's really great for working on cars now. Akash Lael says, what gas do you use, Scotty? Well, I use the nearest one I can find. <laughs> Two blocks from my house, there's a station. It's now Exxon gas, but before that, it was Chevron gas, and before that, it was a shell gas. Somebody keeps buying a station, and then they change what kind of gas they put in it. Regular cars, Toyotas that I drive, they'll run on anything. Doesn't really matter. Now, I do have to say, though, I've got a Triumph Thruxton motorcycle. And when I fill that up, I go down the street to the Shell, and I put in the high-test Shell gas, that Shell Super V, and it seems to run a little bit better with it, because it's a high-compression engine, and it's an air-cooled motorcycle. But for most cars, yeah, you can run them on just about anything in the United States that anybody makes, because it's all well-made gasoline. There's laws for it. It has to meet certain anti-pollution specs. There's all kinds of things. Uh, they all have a certain amount of additives in them, too, so eh, doesn't really matter, most cars. Benjamin Schuler says, what do you think about buying an O2 Dodge Dakota with 60,000 miles, and the engine has been rebuilt? Well, you kind of answered your own question there. If that thing's only got 60,000 miles on it, and the engine had to be rebuilt, it wasn't very good to begin with. Now, if you mean that the engine rebuild itself was done 60,000 miles ago, and it's a 2002 Dodge Dakota. I doubt if I'd buy it, because the engines were okay in those, especially the V8s. They were decent engines, but the rest of the truck was pretty much junky. Ah, the electronics go bad. The air conditioning systems go bad. The suspension systems are weak. The ball joints break on them. So, I mean, really, I wouldn't buy one of those in the first place. But let's say it's really cheap, and it runs good. If you can pick it up for, you know, 1000 bucks or something, you want a truck, what the heck, buy it and see how long it lasts. Modern stuff costs money. I was shocked the other day when somebody brought me over a brand new F-150 that they bought just to say, hey, look at my new truck, and found out that they spent over 40,000 bucks for that pickup truck. I'm like, woo! <laughs> so if you can get one for a thousand bucks and it runs, what the heck, see how long it lasts. Richard Rodriguez says, my 93 Accord won't start. It has battery, starter, alternator, spark plugs, and distributor wire new. What can be the problem? Why won't it start? Well, there's a lot of reasons a car won't start. I have a perfect video that millions of people have watched that's called Fixing a Car That Cranks But Doesn't Start Up. Watch that video. It follows them all out. But knowing those Accords, often they just lose spark because the pickup on the distributor goes bad. Most guys will just buy a brand new distributor and put it in. So the first thing you want to check, see if it's got spark. You get a little spark bug tester. It goes on the spark bug wires. It flashes every time. And if somebody else cranks it over, you look at it, it should go flash, 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 flash. And if it isn't, you got no spark. And in that case, just buy a brand new distributor. That's the most common thing. But there's a lot of things that can do and go wrong. So you really want to watch my video fixing a car that cranks but doesn't start up. So you can check every single one of them because you never know which one going to go bad at any one time. Brian Howard said, can you please tell me how to get dried soap scum off my car? Soap and water isn't working, and Windex and Windows doesn't work either. Any really good car wash that you can buy, I like the McGuire's car wash. Comes in a big liquid container, and you put, they say you use a capful, a capful, pff, I put like 10 times that much in the water, then use really hot water from your house. Run the bathtub till it's steaming, then put your bucket under there, and mix the water and soap there, and then go outside. And the heat should get the soap scum off. It really should clean it off. 
I mean, there's no way that it shouldn't get it off. If it's so bad that you can't get it off, then my advice would be go to one of those steam cleaning places and have them steam clean it off because the steam will take the soap scum off. There's no arguing that. Steam gets hot enough that it'll take the soap scum all off your paint. And they got those wands that steam cleaner and they can clean it all off. Generally the bucket of hot water and good cleaner like McGuire's will do it. We'll take it off. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.